So for today's service, um, you're going to get three uh, uh, breaking news alerts um, from, uh, from the beloved Community Church News uh, reporting team. Uh, uh, Reverend Melinda Larkin, uh, Pastor Rich Shear, and myself, uh, Pastor Nelson Pierce. So we're going to give you 10 minutes of good news. Whosoever believeth in him 
should not perish, <laughs> but have ever, eternal, everlasting life. Yeah. For God sent not his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world would be saved through him. Now that's good news for 2016. That's the, the biggest news alert there is. And I just want to continue to say, as a chaplain here at Christ Hospital for going on 16 years, mm. The one thing that God wants, the patients, the staff, and for those of you who are sitting here, is the fact that he loves us yes. unconditionally. Yes. And if we could just simply grasp his unconditional love for us, that's the beginning of faith. That faith that's the size of a mustard seed. I don't know what your 2015 was, was like, you may have been in a valley. You may have been in a cave. You may have endured some suffering. You may have lost some loved ones. I know for a fact, as the chaplain for the women who are in need of grief support, there have been many baby losses this year. Mm -hmm. So I just want to continue to encourage you to have that faith. That faith, even if that little mustard seed, because that faith will continue to grow in the Lord. And remember his words, that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. He is always with us, no matter what we go through. If we would just be still and quiet, you can feel the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can even hear that small just the voice that comes and say, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I got you. You don't have to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, we sometimes, we, we try to understand the things that happen to us. We try mm -hmm. to explain it to ourselves. Yeah. But he said, don't lean to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just Amen. have that faith, faith and the hope, and especially that love one for another. He says, love your enemies. I know what the things that have happened, not only in 2015, 2012, all of the shootings, Black Lives Matter, mm. everybody's life matter. But we don't understand some of the shootings, the ISO and whatever they call themselves. But God said, you don't have to fear this thing. I have overcome all of this, mm -hmm. and I just am, want you to know, I just want you to still have that faith. I want you to encourage you to have that faith, the faith that he allows will grow inside of us. Hope. We are never without hope. The hope is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. For those of you who might be listening to my voice and may not know what I'm talking about when I say our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I read the scripture from John 3.16. Mm -hmm. If you would just say to yourself, Lord, I, I, I don't understand. I haven't been taught. But if you would just whisper to my spirit that you are a living God, that you will help me, you would help me with my fears, help me with my grief, help me with my illness. To the staff here, I know you sometimes get weary of all the things that you see, but God is empowering you too to take care of those that you need to take care of. To our administrators, I know that you have lost staff here. Some have been lost to death. Some have been lost to a job opportunities. But you have a responsibility here to keep growing this hospital in the direction that it was started. And it was started through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the belief of our God. I just want to say, let faith, hope, and love <coughs> Be the news alert that you need for 2016. Right. Yeah. Yes. Don't fret. Don't fear. Just know that the Lord your God is with you. And that if he can love Belinda unconditionally, <laughs> he can love everybody All in this right. room. Right. So I just say to you, welcome in 2016 with faith, hope, 
and love. Yeah, I did a hot And so what I want to do is just uh, 
uh, give you two illustrations. They kind of seem like they're not connected. And then just take a few minutes to connect the dots. And so it's going to be a little different. And so uh, for those that are watching again about technology, uh, it's a little different for me. But, but have you ever uh, heard someone sing, uh, heard someone play the piano, and, uh, and they hit a bad note? And uh, you know we we've heard that, and and I can't sing. I tell people I cannot carry a tune in a bucket. That means if you were to put the notes in a bucket and give it to me, I couldn't carry it. I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket, and uh, you know tone deaf, and I don't I can't play any instruments. But sometimes I will be listening to someone, and I'll say that wasn't the right note. Daughters would say, well, what was it? I said, I don't know what the right note is, but I can tell that was not, not it. it. All right? And, and, and I said all that because in all this beauty that we see when we look at the Grand Canyon and all of that, the Bible says, and I'll read it later on, the Bible says that in all the glory, uh, creation is still singing in minor mm -hmm. key. Mm -hmm. All right? That's what the Bible says. We'll read that in a little bit. And so I have this little picture I keep on my desk in my office when I sometimes get confused about God's Word. And it's a collage. That means it has a whole bunch of snapshots. And so if you're just listening and can't see it, I will describe it. And so I took about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like, I don't know, eight, eight pictures and, and made a collage. And so one of them is a picture of, of the Grand Canyon and all the hotness of the Grand Canyon. There's a picture of a, a waterfall. Um, then there's this picture of some ice thing in, in the Arctic, and it's very pretty. Uh, there's a picture of the universe, solar system, and all this uh, majesty. And then I have a few pictures up here, uh, have animals up here. And uh, it is, it's not gruesome, but it is a lion, a ferocious lion attacking a zebra. Okay? And then I have this leopard that's chasing what looks like, and it is, an innocent baby gazelle. You know, and we read that little passage about his eyes are on the sparrow, and I know he's watching me. And I say to myself, did God love the lion and curse the zebra? You know, if he claims he loved, you know. And so I asked that question, what's up with that? So then I got this one last little snapshot, and uh, it's a, it must be a, a picture that someone, it's a fake picture, because it's a picture of a lion and next to it is a lamb. Mm -hmm. And so there's this picture I just sort of keep on my wall. I look at it about once every two months. And, and then the scripture says, For we know the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And then the one that really sticks out, Isaiah 65 and 25 says, And in that day it shall come to pass that the wolf, we say the lion, and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like a bull. Now when I go to the zoo, I still see a fence between the lion and the lamb. <laughs> Right. And, and praise the Lord, a fence between the lion and, and me. <laughs> Even more greater praise there. And, and so that just lets me know whenever I look at this picture, it lets me know and look at this verse that God says, in that day I'm going to restore all things. It just lets me know that we're not in that day yet. We're not in that day yet. And so the thing is that God says, when you look at all this glory, all this nature, and, and I declare if you go outside when there's no smog at night and look at the stars and, and all of that, David said, when I consider, you know, the work of our fingers, the moon and the stars, with thou has our day, David scratches and says, what is purely little man that you're lying for him? And when I look at the Grand Canyon, Niagara Falls, and all of that, and God says creation is still singing in minor key. Because the lion is not yet lying with the lamb. And, and, in God, and he says creation. He says in all this technology and, and how you can find a cure for this and that and this and that. He says we still have cancer. Yes. We still have diabetes. 
We still have liver issues. And so therefore, in all of man's technology, go ahead and put man on the moon. Go ahead and do open heart surgery. And go ahead and even lower my cholesterol. God says, I know that's a blessing, but it still seems in minor key. Mm -hmm. It's still just a little bit off key because of cancer and diabetes. And, and so the question is, what do we do? Well, at, at the love community, I would say I'm glad you asked. Mm -hmm. And so let me just give you another illustration. I'm going to try to connect the dots and be, be done. Hopefully, we'll be helped a little bit in how we can go into this 2016. I, I have a high school buddy, and, and, and I'm no, no years old. And, and so it's been many years since I graduated from high school. And, and I hadn't seen this guy in, in over 35 some years. And, and needless to say, I ran into him on the golf course. And, um, and so afterwards, we, we went to his house, and, and he had a, you know, it was an okay house, but he had this three-car garage built in the back. And then I, so he was taking me back there, and, and then I saw what looked like nice cars outside. I said, why would you build a three-car garage, and then you got your car on the outside? And he says, do you remember that 1959 Chevy that I purchased, and I said I was going to restore it? I said, yeah. He says, but that's what I'm keeping in the garage. I bought two so I can take parts from, you know, and use another. He says, I'm still restoring it. Mm -hmm. And I says, after all these years, you still working on it? He says, and I'm almost done. Mm -hmm. 35 years, and it was a 19. He bought it then. And I, and, and, and I said, does it run? And he raises up the garage and door, and, and it looked like it was brand new. He says, no, it still has a long way to go. And in a sense, he was saying it's still. I said, does it run? He says, I take it out for a drive about three times a year, but it still runs a little off key, you know. And, uh, and I looked and I says, well, maybe that's why you can't play golf. You, you're wasting your time on this piece of thing here. And, uh, and he was showing me all the stuff he was doing to, to restore, I'm going somewhere with that, yeah. to restore the car back to its original intent, you know. The car had breakdown, you know, cancer, that anyway. And so he said, he's trying to restore this thing. And, and, and I'm just looking at it, and I was so amazed how, how he has spent all this time. And I said, you wasted your time. Mm. I, said, I said, you know, we're not spring chickens anymore. You know you're getting old. I said, I hate to break the news, but I don't think you want to be living long enough <laughs> to even no, you enjoy this. <laughs> and he says, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. He says, you don't understand. Mm -hmm. He says, I got more joy in it while I was working on it all along. Mm -hmm. He says, it was those times that I spent those quiet hours yeah. with God, you know, yeah. wondering how to do get these. He says, it was this when I, after I read my Sunday school lesson, and then I go out to the garage and spend that time alone restoring. He said, in fact, just last week, I reupholstered the, the back seat, and, and that thing looked brand new. I was sitting in it. He says, in fact, my wife and I celebrated our anniversary All in right. the car. I got to go out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> And so, it's, 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 so, and he began to give me details. I can't give you the details. He put that heart monitor strap to him. And I won't get the details. And, and, and he says, and that even helped my marriage. And, and, and so, he says, we celebrated what we started in the car. Hey, man, some 35, 40, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, he says, you got to recognize that, that, that going through this really helped me all along. And so I said all of that, let me connect the dots and I'll be done, <coughs> done is, that, is that I now, when I look at this picture, I don't have to spend all day wondering that God uh, bless the lion and curse the zebra. Mm -hmm. I don't have to wonder. I, I ain't got to worry about that. I ain't got to wonder why God still allows cancer. Every once in a while, that one trips me up. I don't have to wonder why God would allow somebody to bring a baby, an infant, into the world and they praise the Lord. And then two years later, the doctor says the baby has cancer. I don't, I, I, you know, I get upset sometimes when I see, to, uh, you know, twins join at the hips and join at the head. And I'm like, God, surely they cannot have the kind of life that, that they wanted to have. But I don't, 
I, I look at the picture and, I, and then I look at this and God lets me know, he says, in all my beauty and all of that, he says, it's just singing in minor key, but one day I will restore it back to where it was. Yeah. One day the lion will eat straw, just like a cow again. And one day I'm going to restore that. He said, but don't concentrate on the very end. He said, you can enjoy life getting there. Yeah, right. Right. Every day you can still enjoy life. And so my buddy let me know that he didn't have to wait till the whole car was done. Right. He can begin to enjoy life every day yeah. doing a little bitty restoration project. Yeah. And so God says, even in the midst of your sickness, even in the midst of having cancer, even in the midst of your diabetes, even in the midst of being in a hospital, whether you checked in last night, last week, last <coughs> month, or even last year, he says, in the midst of physical and emotional and mental setbacks, we can still learn to appreciate and take satisfaction in the journey along the way. Yeah. God says, DC may see God says, in fact, if I allow you to wake up tomorrow, mm -hmm. he says, maybe there's something, little things you could restore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. you could work on your attitude. Yeah. If I let you see two days in 2016, mm -hmm. the next time maybe you need to reupholster that greedy grudge you got. Right. And if I let you wake up that third day in 2016, <laughs> maybe you can, you know, buff out that little bad attitude you have. Yeah. And God says, maybe there's some little bitty restoration projects I can work on every day in 2016. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 God bless you. Let me read this last passage and we'll be done. And so, Paul, let me just read that last passage again, but I give it to you in Eugene Peterson's translation. He says, that's why, Paul said, that's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. The created world itself can hardly wait for what's coming next. Everything in creation is being more or less held back until both creation and all the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment. And so good news in, in 2016 and, and for every day that God wakes us up, he said, that's just another opportunity to work on yes, something. Yes, yes. Maybe it's the backseat, maybe it's the hood, maybe it's the engine, but it's something. Amen? Amen. 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 God.
Samson reached towards the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on one, his left hand on the other. Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. This is the word of God for the people of God. All honor, glory, and praise is due to God. Won't you do me a favor? I know this is a, a Thursday evening. Won't you act like it's a Sunday morning just for a minute and turn to your neighbor, look at your neighbor, and uh, uh, look at your neighbor good. Give them a good look like they matter, like they are valuable, like they're important to you. And then look at your neighbor, and then do me a favor, look at your watch for a second. If you don't have a watch on, just act like you're looking at your watch. Look at your, your watch and look back at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and look at your watch. And then look at your neighbor and point to your watch and say, neighbor, neighbor. there's still time. There's still time. Now tell them again because they didn't believe it the way you said it the first time. Tell them like you mean it. Say, neighbor, neighbor. there's still time. There's still time. My, my brothers and sisters, um, I, I'm here to let you know that almost everything in life is finite. Um, and what I mean by that is that everything in life uh, has to come to an end at some point in time. Um, we are probably more aware of that now in this moment as the final hours of 2015 are ticking away from us. Um, and uh, before I go any further on that, I just need to take a moment uh, just to say thank you to Jesus for bringing me through 2015. I don't know about you, but, but uh, Reverend Belinda was talking about me. I was in the cave. I was in the valley. I was all of that in 2015. There were times I did not know how I was going to get out from where I was. There were times that I questioned. Was I going to make it to the end of 2015 yeah. in my right mind and good health? And uh, the Lord, every single time, uh, I thought my back was against the wall. The Lord opened up a window. Yes, uh, yes. I am a living testimony of the song, The Lord Will Make a Way Somehow. Yes. I didn't yes. know how it was going to happen, but God did it. And I just have to take a moment to say thank you, God, for bringing me to oh, 2015. Yes. And maybe I'm not the only one. Maybe there's somebody right here. Right now, that says, Reverend, I just need to take 30 seconds just to praise God to yes. say thank you, Jesus, for bringing me through 2015. Uh, the Lord brought us through 2015. 
15, uh, and we are here now in the last four hours and some minutes uh, of the year. Um, uh, and, and it's a reminder, my brothers and sisters, that years, no matter how difficult or challenging they may be, years do come to an end. Yes. Uh, uh, but it's not just years that come to an end. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm actually glad this year is over. I'm ready for 2016. Whatever challenges it may be, let them be new challenges. I, I just, I'm tired of these same old ones. Uh, give them some new ones. So I'm ready for 2016. I'm glad it's come to an end. Sometimes in life that uh, we have those moments when we are glad things come to an end. Uh, I remember when I was young, on the last day of school, there was no greater day in the calendar year than the last day of school. It was yes. almost better than Christmas. Uh, uh, we would be there, and uh, we knew we had now three months of free time. And as soon as that last bell rang, we ran out into the hallway, and we screamed. And I had to wear a uniform uh, to school. So we took off our ties, and we're waving our ties around, and unbuttoning the shirts, and uh, ripping the shirts off in the middle of the hallway, and screaming, uh, because we were so glad school was over. It had come to an end. There sometimes we are glad things come to and end. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters, every once in a while, somebody may have had a waiting to exhale moment. You said, what's a waiting yes. to exhale moment, Reverend? It's when <laughs> you were in a relationship and the relationship wasn't good for you. You weren't necessarily sure you wanted it to end, but it just felt heavy on you. And you thought you would be sad, but when it was over, you found yourself feeling better uh, at the end of it than you did while you were in it. And so you just found yourself just, yes. <sighs> thank you, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Is when we get to the end of something, my brothers and sisters, but that's not always the way it is. There are sometimes we get to ends and the ends can be heavy. Uh, there are sometimes we get to the end and the end can be sad. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, jobs come to an unexpected end. And it leads us with concern about our financial future or concern with what are we going to do at this next juncture in our life. There's sometimes that friendships and relationships come to an end. Uh, there are friendships and relationships that we enjoy. We weren't ready to say goodbye. The end seemed to come too soon. There's sometimes, my brothers and sisters, uh, that even life comes to an end. Maybe the life of somebody that we love. Uh, there are times, uh, there is going to be a time for each and every one of us that our life will come to an end, uh, my brothers and sisters. And, uh, and I just want to pause for a moment to say that none of these ends have to be final. Uh, what Pastor Rick said, so I can just cut out that section of my sermon and just point you back to his sermon when he said that God is preparing us for uh, 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 our faith teaches us that none of those ends have to be final. Yeah, right. That it is the end of this chapter, but it's not the end of the book. The book actually goes on. Uh, and there's another chapter after, but that doesn't make the end any less painful. Uh, if I can just take a couple of minutes back, since I cut out that section of my sermon, if I can take a couple of minutes back and share with you a testimony. I remember uh, in the year 2000 when I lost my father. I lost my father uh, 10 days into uh, the year 2000, January 10th, uh, 2000. I was here in Cincinnati trying to get some business straight on his behalf, and I got a phone call that he had died in New Orleans. So I got on a plane, and I flew back. Uh, to New Orleans, and it, uh, there was a fog over the city. The city seemed heavy um, as I flew back in, and, and, and I had to go about the business of burying my father. Um, and I preached his eulogy. I, I preached it because it's how I make sense of the world. I preached my way through it, and I knew if I didn't preach my way through that, I might have problems preaching the next sermon. So I said, I have to preach this one. And so I preached the eulogy, but it didn't make it any less heavy. I knew the hope. I preached about the hope. But it didn't make it any less heavy. And it actually got on my nerves when people told me that I shouldn't be sad because of the hope. I knew the hope, and I knew the hope was true. But it didn't make me feel any less sad about losing my father. And it, that it hurt. Uh, and, and, and that would just drive me crazy that people would think that that would erase uh, the sadness. So the hope can be real and the sadness can be real at the same time. Uh, the hope for after the end doesn't make coming up to the end any less challenging or difficult, my brothers and sisters. Uh, 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 so uh, we know about the good news on the other side. What I want to do is just uh, just try to fill in a couple, uh, squeeze around where Reverend Rick was preaching and talk about um, uh, what is the good news between now and the end? 
Yeah. So there's, there's still time left. 2015 yeah. isn't over just That's yet. Right. Uh, so there's still some good news between now and the end of 2015, my brothers and sisters. The, uh, the story that we're looking at is the story of Samson. Samson, as I said, was a judge. He was a great fighter. He was fighting for the Israelites because they were being oppressed by the Philistines. The Philistines did not just want to... Uh, uh, didn't just want to govern the Israelites, they wanted to oppress them. They wanted to take their money, take their land, burn everything that they couldn't use. Uh, they believed that their God gave them the power to make everybody else poor so they could be rich. It sounds like some people I know today. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so the Philistines were trying to oppress the Israelites. So every time the Philistines got enough power uh, to threaten the life of the Israelites, God raised up a judge to deliver them out of the oppression. This judge's name was Samson. Every judge had a different tool or gift or ability. No judge was like the others. Gideon uh, 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 Gideon took a group of soldiers and went in uh, to fight. Uh, Deborah uh, uh, anointed the general and went with him into the fight. And Samson was, uh, he was a strong uh, individual. He was a fighter. He didn't need the soldiers. He fought on his own. In fact, the army went up against him and then uh, the Bible says that uh, he took the a jawbone of an animal and beat an entire army by himself. Samson was a strong and mighty uh, person, my brothers and sisters. And as you can imagine, with somebody with that much strength, uh, uh, that it, it, it caused some issues of accountability. Uh, because he was so strong and didn't need anybody else, he did not do the job that he needed to do uh, for himself of having somebody he was accountable to. So he operated as if the rules did not apply to him. Rules that he uh, were given when he was born. Rules that he... Uh, 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 agreed to when he took on this life, the vows that he took, he broke them because he had no accountability. So the same thing that gave him his strength and his power was also the same thing that drove him without accountability to be reckless and wild. And so we are here at a, at a premature end of a life that had so much more potential in part because of the oppression that was around him and in part because he refused to be accountable. It was two things happening at the same time. The world around him was crazy and and he was crazy in the middle of the world. So uh, I'm a, you, we know people like that, my brothers and sisters. The world around them is crazy. It makes life more difficult for them than it needs to be. But at the same time, they're crazy in the world and they don't always help themselves. Uh, and this was Samson. And so Samson has come now to a premature end of a life that has so much more potential than he lived because in his craziness, he gave away the secret to his strength. The person who gave the secret to his strength to betray him and used it against him, uh, and now he found himself with no strength, captured, now blind, coming at the end of his life, my brothers and sisters. Uh, and it's this, in this, I want to say that there is a message of hope and good news to say that there is still time. There are three things I want to say that there's still time to do. The first is there is still time to talk to God. Uh, notice that the first thing Samson does when he gets, uh, he's there and he has the young man place him on the pillars is that he takes a moment to talk to God, my brothers and sisters. Now, it may not seem that amazing, except for when you look at Samson's track record, uh, he might seem, he might not be the first person you think of who would talk to God. Because God had already blessed him with everything he needed. God had already given him everything he could have ever wanted in order to, uh, uh, to uh, do what God had called him to do. And Samson squandered it. Samson blew it. Samson messed it up. Samson ruined it. He was in this condition not because of something that happened to him as much as he was because he messed up. Uh, what God had called him to do and now he's at the end of his life having disappointed God and let down God's people and so you might think that Samson would just turn into himself and throw a pity party for what he has allowed himself to become but Samson in that moment turned to God All right. All right. and God heard Samson's prayer my brothers and sisters, the good news for us is that it does not matter who we are, where we are, what we've done, how we feel like we've disappointed God, messed up on God, let God down, let somebody else down, that no matter who we are or where we are, God still hears our prayers. That yeah. all we have to do is call out and cry out to God because uh, there is nothing the scripture says that can separate us from the love yeah. of God. Yeah. Not hate, not death, not any other creature, nothing in heaven, nothing in hell, nothing that even you can do your 
yourself can separate you from God's love. So today, wherever you are, my brothers and sisters, if there is breath in your body, I want you to know that God still loves you and there is still time to talk to God. Uh, wherever you are, uh, my brothers and sisters, whoever you are, that uh, you can still, uh, God will still hear your prayer. There is still time. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor there's still time. There's still time. Uh, uh, second thing I want to say is there's still time, still time to get closure. Uh, Samson was in an awful situation uh, uh, that he spent his whole life fighting in the struggle with the Philistines. Um, because of their attempts to overtake and oppress the Israelites. And now, here at the end of his life, uh, it looks like his enemy is going to have the last laugh. It looks like they are going to have the upper hand. They have blinded him, and they are making fun of him as they celebrate his defeat, my brothers and sisters. Uh, but Samson's prayer uh, was a prayer for strength for one last act. And that act uh, was to take victory away from the enemy. Uh, uh, Samson realized that he did not his, want his life to go out on the low note. He wanted to go out on a high note, that he needed to bring closure to this situation that he caused for himself. And so uh, 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 Samson, uh, 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 in his last act, he prayed for the ability to have closure uh, in his life, my brothers and sisters. And I want to say that there is still time before we get to the end. There's still time before we get to the end in the last four hours and 20 minutes of 2000. 2015 before uh, whatever end you may be coming to there is still time to get closure uh, there may be people that you need to forgive I want to tell you there's still time to forgive them there may be people that you need to forgive you I want to tell you there's still time to ask for forgiveness whatever it may be that you're in need of to bring closure uh, to the chapter so that it can close well I want you to know that if there is breath in your body you still have time to get that closure uh, the last thing I want to say, my brothers and sisters, is that there is still time to finish strong. Yeah. All right. There is still time to finish strong. Uh, the Bible says that after Samson prays his prayer, he uh, is up on the pillars. One, his right hand is on one pillar, his left hand is on the other. He pushes and he knocks the pillars down. Samson's final act is an act that brings him back to his purpose, that brings him back to the purpose for which God called him. His final act in his life, my brothers and sisters, was an act that brought him back to his true self. Yes, in between, Samson had fallen away. Yes, he had forgotten who he was. Yes, he turned his back on God and on God's people. But in Samson's final act, it was an act that brought him back uh, to his purpose and to himself. So my brothers and sisters, I, I have to ask the question, and I, I was, this one just, it, it got so good to me, I had to link it on Facebook. I was just, I had to type it up on Facebook so the people on Facebook have already seen this question. But just in case you haven't been on Facebook this evening, I gotta ask you, uh, my brothers and sisters, what is your final act in this chapter gonna be? Mm. Is it gonna be an act that brings you closer to your purpose, or is it gonna be an act that takes you further away from your purpose. What is your final act in the chapter going to be, my brothers and sisters? Uh, when we preached on purpose earlier, uh, we said that in every life, storms are going to rise. The question is, where do you want to be moving when the storm comes? Do you want to be moving to God or away from God, uh, my brothers and sisters? In everybody's life, we have periods where things end, where years end, friendships end, relationships end, jobs end. There is an ending that is coming in everybody's life. And the question is, what is your final act going to be? Is it going to be an act that brings you closer to who God is calling you to be? Or an act that brings you further apart? Mm -hmm. uh, brothers and sisters, there was, there was a movie that I, I enjoyed um, watching when I was a kid. Uh, it, was, it was called Cool Runnings. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. the, the movie Cool Runnings. It was about uh, a Jamaican bobsled team. Mm -hmm. uh, there were these sprinters and they were going to be 100 meter uh, champions and uh, the two fastest sprinters were uh, uh, on either side of uh, somebody in the middle. They were in lane four and six. And lane five was a guy who didn't have much of a chance. He was fast, but he wasn't as fast as them. And then, uh, the brother in lane five, in his attempt to get out of the block to try to get a jump, he stumbled and fell, and he tripped up the brothers in four and six. So none of them finished, and they didn't have any, there were no redos. You couldn't have a do-over. Mm -hmm. 
uh, there was no mulligan, and so they, they were going to be uh, without a chance to represent their country in the Olympics until uh, a guy came who had been kicked out of American sports uh, and came to Jamaica and said, I can teach you all how to do lots of the kind of stuff I love to do. So I was excited about it. So here are uh, these brothers in Jamaica who had never seen snow and ice now trained to be uh, Olympic bobsledders. Right. And so uh, 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 they're building a team and they're, they're working together um, in, this, in this effort, uh, doing something that they had never done before. And so they're practicing on a hill. And so they, they get to, uh, they finally get, I think it was in Sweden where the Olympics were being held that year. They get to Sweden. They don't even have jackets on. They're dressed like I am now, getting off the plane, and it's so cold they have to go in and find appropriate clothes to wear. And so uh, they don't even have a bobsled. They have to get a borrow a bobsled, and then they paint it in the Jamaican colors, and they're practicing in the bathtub as they're getting ready. Um, in the first, uh, their first run, it was a bad run. It was horrible. It looked like they had all fallen apart. But then uh, they came back together, and uh, they had a regroup, and they said, we're going we're gonna to do this the way we know how to do it. We can't be the Swiss. We can't be the Russians. We can't be anybody else. We can only be Jamaicans. That's and right. so uh, they, had, uh, they had their saying, one for the money, two for the show, uh, uh, three for cool money, let's go, go, go. And they ran, uh, <laughs> and, ran and they got they got in, they got to eighth place on their second run. And it was uh, the, the last run. And it was, they, were, they had a chance to get a bronze medal if they had a time fast enough. And they were getting ready, and they were going, and they were going faster than they had ever gone before and it looked like that they might not just get the bronze, that they might just get the gold how fast they were going, but they were going just a little bit too fast. And when it came around, the last curve, the bobsled crashed and uh, fell on top of them and the four of them are under the bobsled. And then uh, uh, one brother uh, calls out to his friend and he, he asked them, hey, are, are you dead man? <laughs> And, and, and this, what you have to know is that throughout the movie, every time they crash, he asked him that same question. He said, are you dead, man? And he would say, yeah, I'm dead, man. Uh, and so they, he asked him, he said, are you dead, man? And then he's, there's silence. And he doesn't say anything. And then he finally says, no. No, I'm not dead, man. And uh, the four brothers, they get up and they pick up the bobsled. They know they can't win uh, the way they wanted to. They know they couldn't finish the way they had hoped but they knew they could still finish. And even though the bobsled couldn't go on its own, and instead of the bobsled carrying them, they picked up the bobsled and carried the bobsled uh, across the finish line, my brothers and sisters. And they did not finish the way they wanted to, but they still finished strong. What I'm trying to say, my brothers and sisters, is that you might be here in the last four hours and, 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 and 14 minutes of uh, 2015 with a bobsled on top of you. Uh, uh, what's being said up here to our lives. And so uh, here in this room, 
Uh, we're going to ask if you would just take a moment and share with a friend or a neighbor how uh, any one of these messages has uh, intersected with your life, how uh, it may be lined up with how you were finishing um, in 2015, that maybe you need to, uh, maybe you need the message of faith, hope, and love. Uh, maybe you need the message of, uh, of restoration, and not just of restoration, but enjoying life uh, along the way. Um, or, or maybe it is uh, a message of uh, uh, finishing strong, knowing that there's uh, still time. Uh, whichever one uh, is touching you and blessing you right now, we just ask that you just take a moment and share a little bit with your friend or a neighbor um, how God is speaking to you. And for those watching by TV, go ahead and share with your neighbor across the it's across the bed. Share with the nurse when the nurse comes in and takes your blood pressure. Uh, 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 share with somebody what. Um, God is saying with you right now. I want you to turn to a neighbor and share with them this time. 